Hey, my name's Pasa. Today I'm gonna to be going over the HHKB, um, aka the Happy Hacking Keyboard. I'm gonna be going over uh, specifically the Hybrid Type S model. I think I've had it for a pretty decent time now and I think it's a good time for me to give uh, my thoughts um, and give my verdict on whether or not it's worth it because this is a pretty pricey keyboard. I can't kid you on that. It's 300 pounds. I'm not sure how much it's in dollars. Maybe it's 300 dollars. But I did not get it for that much. I got it for half price. I got it for 150. I got it from eBay, and it was actually pretty. It was brand new, pretty much. It was just the box was opened, and I am very happy I did that. I also managed to haggle it to half price. It was like 170 or something. How I got around to um, discovering this keyboard was um, basically when I was at Google. I remember there was this guy at his desk where I used to walk past to get to my desk. And he had this keyboard. I'm not sure if he had the Type S, but I remember he had a HHKB. It was definitely HHKB. And I was just like thinking to myself, damn, this is sick. Like, either way, this whole like layout just looks so sick to me. And I've always wanted to like even give it a try. Before I get into more details about the keyboard, I thought I'd do like a little uh, history lesson about how this keyboard even came to be. So the layout is based on a Unix layout, but this layout was designed by, I think it was a professor at university at the time, Ichiwada, I think, I think I'm saying it wrong <laughs> but either way he designed the keyboard because he found some frustrations with existing layouts and this is how the hkb layout was uh, born a lot of people uh, did like it i think it's turned into like a little bit of a cult following now if you're also interested to learn more about the keyboard then i highly recommend with visiting a website called hhkb.io uh, that's where i got most of my information from but it also has like a little uh, very nice uh, list of the history of the keyboard this started off in like 1996, if I got it right. So first things first, the design. I must say this is a very, very beautiful design. I mean, it's very symmetrical. You know, it's well almost symmetrical. Uh, this side, I mean, I wish this side was just, I wish the uh, space bar was like a seven new space bar, so it extends out. And so, you know, it looks perfectly symmetrical. I could fit like two fingers here, but not on this side. Um, but yeah, it's very beautiful. Also, I got in the uh, all black layout with the actual keycaps printed. I think that when you look at it from like an angle, uh, it does look all black. Literally, you can't even see the keycaps uh, printed on them or the letters printed. I mean, even after like um, maybe a week of uh, getting used to the layout, I didn't really need to look at my keyboard because I touch stuff anyways. So I don't need to you know, look at what I'm doing on the keyboard or hunt and peck, which I used to do a lot. I should mention that the keycaps are PBT. Um, which is pretty nice. I'm not sure if they're double shot PPT, but they are definitely not ABS. Um, and also one thing I want to know, because you know, it's a re review from me, from my experience, um, the keycaps are a little bit small. Like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm just like overreacting, but you know, if I press, if I put my finger over here, okay, I'm, okay. I suppose I'm doing the middle finger too, my bad. Um, if I do this, um, you can see that, you know, my whole finger covers the keycap which isn't really ideal but um this was only a problem when i was first learning the layout so i kind of have some you know uh, mistypings where i hit like another key by accident um but now i think i've been pretty accurate with it so it's not really a big deal but if you're someone that has like you know pretty chubby fingers or something uh, there's definitely something to consider but yeah just wanted to uh, let you know about that the actual keyboard is very well built like you you, you can say by it's plastic so it's you know it's cheap but I've seen some, you know, metal keyboards or something that are built like crap. But this keyboard is very, very well built. Like, you know, I could creak it, but I don't really hear any creaking. I remember previous models, I think one of them had creaking, but this is a very well built keyboard. It's very high quality and it shows. I mean, it's in the price as well, um, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, one thing I also wanted to mention about this entire keyboard design um, is that it has something called dip switches. So if you look over here on the back, it's a little, um, container i guess and when you open it up or container i don't feel like it even makes sense anyways when i open up this lid um we get access to these little switches dip switches but i think that this whole thing where i could just like you know turn off the keyboard uh, open up the lid and just like turn on the switch and then boom i'm already switched over to like a different layout for example i think that this is a very very cool feature and i think it sort of ties into the whole philosophy of this keyboard that it's not supposed to be reliant on anything the whole keyboard is a keyboard with itself so i wanted to go over the bluetooth and battery situation so basically with this keyboard it uses AA batteries um it's housed inside here um i can actually open this up to show you so here you go i have some batteries in here and so this is the second set of batteries i've used i used um the batteries that were provided uh, in the box first and then after three months um it sort of started giving me warnings so i was like you know what might as well uh, replace the batteries 
three months is probably not a long time. I mean, I've seen keyboards going for much longer than that, but I'll happily take using non-proprietary batteries. So that means I don't have to probably replace the whole keyboard. And you know, it might be housed in like a pretty ugly uh, little container, but I'll happily take it. I mean, it's much better for longevity. I mean, I'm playing, playing a pretty good amount for this keyboard. So it sort of ties into the whole philosophy of their keyboard being pretty simple. Just put some batteries in and boom, you got uh, Bluetooth working. This keyboard has something called a power saving mode. Now, basically what that means is that after 30 minutes of inactive use, it just turns off and, you know, I don't really mind it. For example, I mean, I have other keyboards. If you have power saving mode enabled, it will just like turn off, like, you know, go into like a hibernation mode or something. And then when you like start pressing on the keys or, you know, wake up. But with this one, it just, it just completely, you know, dies out. Like, you know, if you do if you press on the keys, it's not going to wake up. What you have to do is you have to turn off, turn it on, sorry, with the button over here. Um, I'll just show you here real quick. And I don't really mind it. it. I feel like it's kind of like a ritual, you know, every morning or something. Also on the batteries, given that they're not proprietary, it definitely gets a Lindy approval from me because yeah, I'm not worried about uh, AA batteries going out of style anytime soon. So very, very good. If you're wondering how many devices you can connect up to, it's four. I almost forgot to mention that you can use it wired. Um, if you just connect the USB-C cable into it, um, like this one I have here, you, know, you connect it and it just flashes and then, you know, it works. Also, I just realized it is February 14th today and which is Valentine's Day and I'm out here making a YouTube review about a very, very niche keyboard. I mean, what has life come to? Um, but anyways, Let's go into the main bit, which is the switches. This uses a mechanism called top ray switches. Now, top ray is basically a type of switch that uses electric capacitive rubber domes. So basically, when you type on it, I mean, I'm going to do a little bit of a sound test later, but basically, when you press on it, it's very, very sudden when it comes up. And I should also mention that since this is the Type S version, it has like, you know, little O-rings. So it sort of suppresses the uh, loud, um, focky sound that it has with the normal versions. I can say that this keyboard, typing on it feels absolutely amazing. Like I've used plenty of other keyboards in the past. I mean, I built a keyboard, it was 65% I uses Gatron Silent Ink Blacks and it's a linear switch and it feels great to type on, but sometimes when bottoming it out, it kind of, you know, gives my fingers a little bit of fatigue. And I can also say the same with low profile keyboards, for example, the uh, Apple MacBook keyboards. Every time I type on it for too long, I get I go some finger fatigue, but with this keyboard, like I could type for hours on end, literally non-stop, and I have not had any bit of fatigue with this. It just it just feels like cushions for your fingers. Like when I press into it, it feels so nice. Uh, it feels very mushy and nice. I mean, if it's someone that likes precision, then this is nice. But they always say this is a very precise keyboard, but I don't really agree with them. For example, let's say I open up a new tab in Chrome, so I use Control T. I'll press like you know M, right, uh, to start typing a domain. The issue is that for some reason, the, con the command key is still registered. And so when I press M, it registers that as command M and it suddenly minimizes my window, um, which is really, really annoying. Like I've done this countless times. This isn't like a rare occurrence. Like it probably happens a couple times a day, for example. So that's one thing that really annoys me. And I don't know if this is the issue of the type S model. If you have the normal model, please let me know in the comments if you've had this issue before. But yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's a, you know, it's a me problem. I'm the one that is, you know, holding out on command for too long. But I can tell you, for example, like, I don't, I don't have this issue with any other keyboards. So I'm definitely not holding out the command while I'm pressing M. So it's definitely something with, with the travel when it comes back up, it just takes a bit longer. And so the, re the key press is already registered by that point. And for all the people that work in an office setting, I could definitely say for certain that this is definitely something you can, you know, use in the office. This definitely is not a very loud keyboard. Like, it definitely is louder than a typical office membrane keyboard, but it's not really noticeable. And the Type S is probably a worthy upgrade if you can get it over the normal model.
finally, I wanted to go over the layout. So this is probably the most important bit of this keyboard. I mean, the layout was created before the actual keyboard. So yeah, regarding the layout, um, obviously it is quite a different layout. Like the main differences I would say are the caps lock key. There is no caps lock key. The control key is replacing that. And so what else? And then you also have the backspace key. And then you have this, you know, little FN key over here. This is the most important bit. And then finally, the arrow keys. There are no arrow keys. So how do you access those? Well, use FN and then use these four keys. And I must say, everyone's biggest problem with learning this layout is this lack of arrow keys. It was very, very easy for me to get used to this. But I should probably mention, I am a heavy, heavy Vim user. I enable Vim everywhere I go. If I can enable it, I use keybinds everywhere I can. Um, so it wasn't really an issue for me because, you know, for the arrow keys, I only use it when I'm like navigating between a document or something. But also, I guess I'm just built different. Um, I also wanted to mention that, you know, with this layout, the issue is, is that sometimes when I'm holding my pinky finger on the FN key and I'm using the arrow keys, I kind of get some pinky fatigue. Like for example, if I'm, you know, scrolling through an album of photos or like, you know, I'm just using left and right a lot. Um, and I'm holding my pinky down, then I do get some fatigue. I can already feel it right now because it's in a weird it's in a weird position. Like I kind of just like I kind of just want to like you know leave my finger on it and then just like do this like like this. It's a bit weird. Like I'm not doing it like that. Um, but yeah, just wanted to let you know about like I mean I guess my fingers is weak. I don't know. I mean I lift, but I guess I only train fingers now. I also wanted to go over real quick about the uh, media keys and I remapped them in the software, but it only has like volume up and down and mute, but it doesn't have pause, play, you know, next and previous. So the issues was that I can't really set that in the software. So I had to use something called Caribbean Elements. It's basically like, you know, a software where you can install a macOS that remaps keys and it works very, very well. It pretty much works natively. I don't really notice that I'm using software to uh, remap my keyboard, like it works so quick and very easily. So if you're on Mac and you want to use media keys, then definitely download Caribbean, it's very easy to set up. And finally, on the layout situation. So the only machine I use this keyboard with is so far my Mac. I don't carry this HHKB everywhere I go, for example, I just sometimes wanna take my laptop and use the keyboard on that. But the issue I had initially was the whole, you know, pressing backspace uh, and have to extend my finger more to press backspace. And then, you know, the enter key is also quite further out. So I had issues with that in like the first couple of weeks of, you know, switching between. But after some time, I think I'm very used to that. And I've gone so far as to remap my caps lock key on my Mac to control as well, because I'm so used to it. It's just so perfect. Like, for example, this control key, I could just like, you know, have my pinky on it and then press control A. So for Tmux, you know, so it's a piece of software that I used to switch between uh, terminal sessions. Um, my key that I would use to activate Tmux is just control A. And so it's very, very easy for me to switch between uh, those sessions, uh, which I really, really appreciate. Definitely much better than having the control at the bottom. It just felt really awkward. I think this layout has completely changed the way uh, in try with keyboard. Like, you know, one simple key mapping uh, change is not really, you know, completely changed the way, but it's still like very, very nice that I could now um, use a different layout without having to worry about it. Uh, so going forward, if I want to switch to another layout, I think I'll be quite good at doing that. I do want to switch to like, you know, Dvorak or something, or uh, Colmac or uh, the Workman layout, but I'm probably not going to do that realistically. It's not really worth it. This is enough of an efficiency boost, if I would say so. All right, we made it to the end of the video. Just wanted to give a little bit of a conclusion on this keyboard. Um, I would say this keyboard, the HHK, what do I think of it actually? I think that this keyboard is worth it if you're someone that could get it on a pretty good discount, or if you're someone that, you know, wants to deliver the absolute maximum shareholder value. Obviously that's a joke, but I'm trying to say that if you're someone that really cares about your craft, if you're someone that really cares about efficiency and just like finding small ways of boosting uh, your productivity at work, that be if you're a software engineer, someone that's like, you know, like a journalist or someone that just writes a lot with a keyboard, um, this is worth it because it's an investment into your fingers. Like you want to feel comfortable, but you also want to have a sort of layout that's, so you know, an efficiency boost. I would say you're paying into the actual, you know, there's a brand element to this as well, but you're also paying, paying into the whole build quality, the keyboard, uh, like switches and one of the topper switches are not cheap, uh, whatever, whatever the layout is. Um, but I definitely think it's worth it. And if you're someone that's, you know, working already and you could get expensed, then I can say this thing for everything. Like, you know, if you get expensed, you gotta go for it. 
Um, but generally, like, if you want to pay it out of your own pocket and you're someone that's doing it as like a hobby thing, like, you know, you're, you're, you just want to use a keyboard for fun, you don't really, you don't want to see it as a tool, but as like a, you know, a little bit of a, a toy or a gadget, um, then yeah, it's a lot of money to spend on a little gadget. This is a definitely a very much a toolkit. You can see from the whole construction, from the build quality, it's not luxurious. But I really like that aspect. It's just very, very, I don't know, it just feels very tooly and I love it. It's it's amazing. Like every time I use this keyboard, I just feel like getting to work with it. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate that factor. And if I'm paying more money for that, then you know, by all means, I don't mind. And again, like regarding the price, if you can try find it second hand. Um I would say, like, you know, for a keyboard like this. It's gonna last you quite a long time. I've seen, you know, videos of from like, you know, many, many years ago of people still using their keyboard and it works perfectly fine. It's a keyboard that's supposed to last for long. The price is again, gonna be reflected in the actual quality. I would say it's not a big deal if you can find it secondhand. So this is it for the end of the video. Really appreciate you staying to the end because I feel like, you know, this keyboard has been an absolute pleasure to use. And I'm very happy that I got to make this video uh, with like a review because yeah, every time anyone asks me about what I feel about it, I'm just, you know, I go in like a little um, big passionate ramble about how much I love it. So yeah, um, if you have any sort of thoughts, do leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, you know, please leave a like because it helps the channel. And also, if you have a HHKB, do let me know. I'm very happy to hear your thoughts as well and what you think. If there's anything you disagree with about my review, do leave a, a comment below as well on that. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll see you in another video. Take care.